All right, welcome back to the show. You're watching I'm Not a Professional, but wait, I am with your host, Sam, DJ Lumberjack. It's now time for our news and current events. And with me to discuss all the exciting things is Tall Greenberg. Tall, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, it's been a huge, huge week. Uh, obviously, the the big one in a lot of people's minds this week is the, uh, the heating up of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. All right, we're going to have a quick update here. Uh, we were recording our segment uh, a few days ago, and I'm editing the show. And, of course, we had some uh, major updates that we would be remiss not to include in the show. So, Tall, why don't you go ahead? We have some uh, updates. Uh, we were talking about the 24-hour uh, ceasefire with the Gaza uh, Strip with Hamas and Israel, and that did not work out. Tall, why don't you take it away? So the, the uh, Egyptian uh, ceasefire failed, and Hamas, of course, can, claims they weren't consulted, but there was also no terms in the deal for them. So they wanted to come out with a little bit of, uh, of a victory, and, and so far they aren't inducing high Israeli casualties. They're losing a lot of their own people, and whereas there would be rash condemnation and a lot of diplomatic pressure to bear in Israel, uh, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia um, are, are also are sort of muted and um, quite happy to see uh, Hamas, which many consider an offshoot of the Brotherhood and, and, and their own problems, um, uh, get punished and severely weakened by the Israelis. The problem is there's also no end game for the Israelis because it's ca casualties uh, continue to mount. Um, that uh, diplomatic support, that current uh, tacit support, will, will begin to uh, erode. Are there any solutions here to really cause you know that ceasefire to last and sustain, and for both sides to really stop the um, right. the bloodshed? The really, only end game is for the Israelis to finally cut a deal with um, the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, and at least give uh, the West Bank move that towards statehood. And then um, essentially have the Palestinian Authority uh, take over Gaza and for there to be the peace treaty. That is the one thing um, that ultimately would completely undermine Hamas and also uh, help change the situation. And that could be uh, one of the pride, the press or one of the, the, the parts of the agreement is that is uh, sort of that would be the disbanding of Hamas. But the Israelis should not be the ones to be doing that. That's a Palestinian internal affair. And you know, there's also some things going on in Syria that are somehow uh, related to it's that. All, it's, all, it's, all, it's all connected and it's all not connected. I mean, it's all connected in that Assad just uh, sworn in for his third term. Uh, and that know, was a that was a legit election, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, really. So, um, you know, never been. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just crazy over there because you have you know, we support rebel group groups in Syria trying to overthrow Assad and then mm -hmm. trying to make the distinction between the good rebels and the bad rebels when a lot of them are the same people because the, uh, you know, there's ISIS and then there's a Syrian coalition and ISIS has gained the upper hand and ISIS is now in Iraq as well. So we have this paradoxical situation of working against the Iranians and Hezbollah in Syria, but working with the Iranians in Iraq against ISIS and, and a lot of the other rebel groups. So it's 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 uh it's it's a totally ridiculous clown car of a scenario over there. So that was Biden's original plan to deal with Iraq was hey just make it a federated system you know um, have have an independent Kurdistan have a Sunni state and have a Shiite state and that's how it was organized under the Ottomans and it was administered very well and one one thing you could do is you know make a, if you wanted to even separate Syria out you could make a Sunni state in Syria that includes Western Iraq. And, and, and the Shiite heartland on the coast could be for the for the, the Shiites in Syria. So you could do that if you wanted to have a sort of a global settlement. Yeah, well, it sounds like you, get, you at the negotiation tail, you got some solutions yeah, here. I don't know. Some solutions, you know. Okay, and also, you know, another event that happened in, in the time that I was editing this, and that's why you see us here in the editing room, uh, is the Ukraine. They took down a flight, a Malaysian flight, ironically, um, connections to the other Malaysian flight you think or just a coincidence um, talk a little bit about that and the escalation there in the Ukraine because that's another event that uh, we need to discuss and what, what kind of solution there or uh, is Putin just need to be taken down taking down Putin yeah that's uh, that's a much a longer term prospect and the Russians really need to do that themselves um, anyway yeah no it, it's interesting yeah and conspiracy theorists right now are having the best time since 9-11 they are loving this. I mean, no, you know, I've I've read some outrageous shit really? from oh yeah, from from oh uh, this is a CIA op or you know that the, the original Malaysia one was a test run, you know, to oh to to somehow you know some some or Ukrainian plot to 
to uh, take, uh, you know, to be politically put pressure on the Russians. Some people even to blame the Israelis to, to distract from attention from the Gaza war. I mean, it's, wow. it's, 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 it's outrageous what's out there. And, you know, it's amazing. And, and people just the hysteria involved, it's, you know, and but this has happened before. And it's always a big deal. You know, people don't don't uh, people forget we did this. We shot down an Iranian uh, passenger plane full of Iranians um, and uh, it, we took some heat, but we weathered that. And the Russians, of course, sat, shot down a South Korean plane, killing everybody on board. And they took some major heat from that. And it's just any time you do this, it's one of those things where the blowback politically and just the tragic scale of the situation is so bad that, um, you know, taking the risk uh, that the Russians um, um, did, basically they should have, both sides needed to agree, like, you know, once planes started going down, like, you can't have civilian air corridors open and get other, other things through. What are specifically the solutions in Ukraine, well, I, I I don't think they're you know they're, they're obviously going you know, the European sanctions are going to go up. Um, I don't know how the Russians are going to respond. The smart thing would be uh, I think which ultimately what the Russians are going to do is they're um, going to back down. Um, I think at least in they're they're certainly not going to be supplying any more any air defenses to them. And I think they're they they might just uh, sort of accept the fact that you know try to get some kind of a peace deal out where. You know, they could say, OK, uh, we have certain amount of respect for for, um, you, you know, uh, the Russian Russian autonomy or Russian people will have, you know, like the Russian people of that area will, have, will get certain guarantees. Um, and then but the separatists will ultimately their cause is doomed. And, and um, probably I imagine their funding is going to dry up. Putin will probably have to stop uh, spending money on them as well. So. Actually, the, the one place I'm optimistic about, um, ironically enough, is Afghanistan. Hmm, Afghanistan, you know, huh? Who, who knew? Who knew one could be optimistic about it? Because a couple it? of years back, you would have thought, okay, Iraq's going to kind of get ushered into a steady government, but mm -hmm. Afghanistan, we're going to have to worry yeah. about... Well, Karzai was always the problem. I mean, he was. I mean, he was corrupt, he right? Was, he, he, just... he was corrupt, but he was also unstable, and he, you know, he tried to try to play both sides. Um, you know, they just had an election, and there was a disputed election, and actually, both candidates were pretty pro-Western. So, you know, I think either way, we would have been good with with Ghani or Abdullah Abdullah. Um, but you know, there were some disputed, and then Kerry went over there, and so they sort of came up with a power sharing agreement. I mean, the elites are still going to rule Afghanistan, but the difference is. Now they have a little. If they have more stability and more international aid, uh, I think they actually can achieve something. So, ironically enough, who, who knew? Go Afghanistan. Well, that's good. I mean, something positive something out of that positive. whole region. All right. Well, thank you, Tall, for being on the show. All right. Good to be here. And uh, once again, this is Tall Greenberg, our on-the-spot news correspondent. I hope you enjoyed this segment. We'll be right back with an interview with Trevor Parham, founder and manager of the place we're shooting in oak stop co-working for oakland we'll be right back mm -hmm.